Welcome to the Death Row and Executions channel. I am Paco Rivera. You can also follow me on Facebook for more Death Row news and execution updates. There will be a link to my Facebook in the description below. In Florida, a few weeks ago, during the month of June, Governor Ron DeSantis signed another death warrant for an execution scheduled to take place next month on August 3rd. 61-year-old James Philip Barnes was officially sentenced to death on December 13, 2007, 16 years ago. But the murder that he committed, that he was convicted and sentenced to death for, had occurred on April 20, 1988, 19 years earlier. A year before Barnes was sent to death row in 2006, he had been serving a life sentence in prison for murdering his wife in 1997. At that time in 2006, while in prison serving that life sentence, his DNA was collected and it matched DNA evidence from the 1988 murder. Now, it should be mentioned that before the DNA match was made, a year before that, in 2005, James Barnes had confessed to that 1988 murder. So, a year later, and I don't know why Florida waited that long after Barnes' confession, authorities didn't have to look far to match his DNA with that crime. On April 20, 1988, James Barnes broke into an apartment through a window at the River Oaks condominiums in Melbourne, Florida. Living in the apartment was 41-year-old Patricia Miller, known to everyone as Patsy, who was a registered nurse. At some point, Barnes had taken off all his clothes and then hid in a closet. And from there, he watched Patsy moving about in the apartment. Barnes would eventually confront Patsy with a knife and sexually assault her at knife point. He then tied her hands and feet with some shoelaces while she was lying face down on the bed. After striking her in the head repeatedly with a hammer and killing her, he set her bed on fire in an attempt to destroy the evidence. A medical examiner, however, did determine that Patsy had already died from the blunt force trauma to the head before being burned on the bed. There is no indication in any of the reports that James Barn and Patsy knew each other before she was killed, even though he later claimed that she had humiliated him outside by the condominium's swimming pool and the crime was more of an act of vengeance on his part. Nine years later, in 1997, James Barnes was married to 44-year-old Linda Barnes, but they were separated. However, reports indicate that Barnes and Linda were trying to reconcile their marriage, and he was in her apartment on December 11, 1997. As it turns out, reconciling their marriage wasn't working out, and they got into an argument on that day. That day, Barnes strangled Linda to death and he hid her body in a bedroom closet. While he was walking around the apartment trying to figure out how to dispose of the body, Linda's mother, Linda's brother, and the brother's wife arrived at the apartment and knocked on the door. And Barnes answered it. The family asked, where's Linda? And Barnes told them that she went to a lawyer's office because they were getting a divorce. So the family members left. About an hour later, while Barnes was still trying to figure out what to do with the body, there was a knock at the door again. It was the family again. Only this time, they were accompanied by police. So we now had a situation where the family is saying, we want to know what you did with Linda, and these officers are here to answer that question. Linda's body was found in the closet and Barnes was arrested. He was later convicted and sentenced to life in prison. 
Werner Herzog interviewed James Barnes twice in the year 2010. During the first interview, Herzog got into the matter of additional crimes that Barnes may have committed, besides the murders of Patsy at the River Oaks condominium and his wife Linda. And Barnes at that time only said that he might talk about other crimes at another time. A few weeks later, Werner Herzog received a letter from Barnes, basically saying that he wants to discuss two other murders that have not been linked to him yet. So Herzog interviewed Barnes a second time. That is when Barnes confessed that in the year 1991, he had picked up a prostitute named Brenda Fletcher. During the interview, Barnes said that Brenda stole his wallet and when she denied that she had taken it and refused to return it, he killed her and dumped her body in a ditch along the side of State Road 520 near the I-95 exit. Police records show that the body of Brenda Fletcher was in fact found by someone about that time on April 2nd, 1991. And that case has remained cold to this day. Now, I don't know if the wallet story can be believed. I don't know if anything any death row inmate says can be believed. But anyway, during the interview, I waited for Herzog to ask Barnes if he ever recovered the wallet after the murder. But Herzog never asked that question. I mean, it's the reason that he killed her, right? Barnes also spoke of a young man named Chester Ralph Wetmore. Now, Chester was listed as a missing runaway in 1986 when he was just 14 years old. According to Barnes, he met Chester several years later and that by that time, Chester was heavily addicted to meth and crack cocaine and Barnes was selling him the drugs. According to Barnes, he had left a supply of drugs in his car, temporarily unattended, and that Chester was in the area. He later caught up with Chester and accused him of stealing the drugs. And when Chester refused to give them back, Barnes shot and killed him. And he buried him. He ended up breaking into my car. And I was very, very upset because he took, all my product, he took all my product. And I knew it was him. And, uh, and I, ended up, uh, I ended up killing him, and I ended up burying him. According to Florida officials, unlike the body of Brenda Fletcher, which was discovered by someone soon after her death, the body of Chester has never been found. Never. As a matter of fact, Florida is still considering him a missing person because of that regardless of Barnes' confession. So I'm watching this interview and I am saying to myself, okay, Herzog is going to ask him next, where did he bury the body? There were some more questions about Chester and I thought, okay, the next thing Herzog will ask Barnes is where he buried that body. But the interview is taken into another topic and that question was never asked. And if he did ask it, it didn't appear in the documentary. Anyway, officials of the state of Florida seem to have taken the position that James Barnes is already on death row and will likely get an execution date soon, and there's no need to waste millions of taxpayer dollars on trials for the additional murders that Barnes has confessed to. Which doesn't seem fair to the families of the victims, but that's the decision that Florida has made. And sure enough, Barnes is set to be executed on August the 3rd. Investigation Discovery did a show about these cases in a season five episode called Heat Will Destroy from their Signs of a Psychopath series. Please remember to subscribe for more death row and upcoming execution stories. Remember that you can also follow me on Facebook for more death row news, execution updates, and more. There will be a link to my Facebook in the description below. I am Paco Rivera. Bye for now.